J. Cole said, the pride is the devil. I think it got a hold on me. Pride is the devil. Yeah. And you know what they say? You know what they say? In religious circles, that pride comes before the fall. So no, Tiafimo Lopez. We not gonna let you gaslight us. Let's get into the video. The greatest, the greatest, the greatest. I know what I'm talking about. That's it. It's over. You be I. You tough, right? What's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Tough Glove Boxing. As always, I want to take the time to thank you for checking out the content. If you enjoy it, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel. I welcome you here. You don't have to agree with everything I say. This is a boxing channel. Your opinion is respected. All you got to do is do what I do and love the sport of boxing. You understand? We're going to talk about it today. I really wasn't going to make a video today, but I can't let this go unchecked. You know, we had a fight yesterday, Thursday. Pretty good fights, right? Um, Keyshawn Davis put on against Jose Pedraza. Shout out to Jose Pedraza. He was just outmatched. And no, he didn't look like the Jose Pedraza of old, but you don't expect him to. He is a, 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 a fighter that's up in age in a game, and he's well past his, you know, He's he he understands what his role in boxing is and we appreciate him. He did what he had to do. Keyshawn put on, but shout outs to Jose Pedraza. Back in the day, y'all already know who he was. You understand what I'm saying? So Keyshawn does get credit for that victory. Now, the one thing I want to talk about, though, you understand? And shout out to Keyshawn Davis for calling out Tiafimo Lopez after the fight, right? Because we ain't going to play that sucker shit, right? We ain't going to do that. We ain't going to have you talking all this stuff behind the scenes and, and coming on social media, telling the public what you had to tell black people in the, the, the fight meeting and they can keep the black fighters and Puerto Ricans are easy to beat and you tear them up and you don't care how they feel. All of this nonsense that got nothing to do with boxing, right? So the funny thing to me is the funny thing to me is all of these Tiafimo Lopez fans are making excuses. We all know if Devin Haney would have been in that same situation, you guys would have complained that all Devin Haney had to do was learn how to cut off the ring. See, but now we know why Tiafimo Lopez will never face Subriel Matias. Now we know why Tiafimo Lopez is never going to face Devin the Dream Haney. He wants all of this credit for being the greatest of what? He even said it himself. He's the first two-time undisputed male. Let's 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 even if he fights Crawford, he's gonna try to say he's three-time undisputed, even though Crawford right now only got three of the belts. Crawford right now is not undisputed. Javon Bootson has got one of the belts. Same situation with Josh Taylor. Now, when he fought Lomachenko, he was supposed to be undisputed, yes. But his father, right, so busy focused on a bottle. Didn't stand up for his son's business like, yo, if we win this fight, what we going to do about the real WBC championship belt? What's the franchise belt? They should have got clarity on that, but they didn't. And did Devin Haney give him an opportunity to correct it? Yes, he did. Did he correct it? No. He went to George Cambosos, lost. George Cambosos took all his jewelry. Devin Haney had to fly overseas to go get the jewelry. And then he said Devin Haney took the easy route. Right? The easy route. And then he say he beat Josh Taylor, so that makes him two times undisputed. The only thing is when Josh Taylor fought Tiafimo Lopez, there was already two other champions in the division. Stop me when I'm lying. So if there's two other champions who have belts in the division, how will you undisputed? it? Just because you beat Josh Taylor don't mean anything. Yes, he has the ring magazine belt. You're lineal. But until you beat the other champions, you're not undisputed. Stop with the cat. I know what I saw last night, people. And it wasn't just a close fight. Everybody talking about it was a close fight. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I didn't think it was a close fight. By the time we got to the sixth round, I had Ortiz up 5-1. to one, And I told my wife, I said, listen. 
All he got to do is win two more rounds. And he definitely got it. But at the very least, he earned the draw. Right now, at this point in the fight. So did he slow down near the end? Yes. Did he give up? No. See, this is what lets me know who's real boxing fans and who's not. And I'm not one of these content creators that just say when you don't agree with me, you're not a boxing fan. If you know boxing, if you know what you're looking at, then you know what you're looking at. Right? Hold on a second. Move, Blue. Move. Before you knock my camera down. I know what I'm looking at. I had Ortiz up. Y'all talking about Jermaine Ortiz was running. That's the excuse y'all made for Sandor Martin. That's a, let me explain something to you. Tiafimo Lopez has officially been exposed. The blueprint to beat him is out. Right? He's still celebrating Christmas because Top Rank is still giving this man gifts. He's been exposed. You know what Tiafimo Lopez kryptonite is? It ain't his mentality. It ain't his... Because he works real hard in the gym. He is a very highly skilled fighter. But the fact is, his whole career is the same thing. He has issues with people who have good feet. The only why, reason why he looked like he did against Lomachenko, and that turned out to be a close fight, right? Was because Lomachenko didn't throw punches because Tiafimo Lopez was so much bigger than him. But Lomachenko was stepping to Tiafimo Lopez. So they figured out that Tiafimo Lopez, he's great. He's phenomenal off the back foot. But on that front foot, he's average. So now let me ask you a question. If you can only look spectacular against fighters that have no feet work, that stand there in the pocket to go rock em, sock em with you, if that's the only way you can win a fight, but yet you call calling Subriel Matias one-dimensional, make that make sense. I don't, no, 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 no. We ain't going to talk about Rosa Parks and you only believe in one human race. We not going to do that because the only time race ever came into play when it came to Tiafimo Lopez is when Tiafimo Lopez Jr. opened up his own mouth. Let them keep the black fighters, not the fighters. These Puerto Rican fighters are easy to beat. I tear them up. And I don't care how the Puerto Ricans feel. The same Puerto Ricans, right? Because let's not front. I'm from the Boogie Down Bronx. Shout out to the Boogie Down Bronx. Shout out to Brooklyn, a.k.a. Crooklyn. Shout out to Queens. Shaolin. For those who don't know what Shaolin is, that's Staten Island. The borough that gets forgotten. Shout out to Money Making Manhattan. All of you, the Boliquas. Help develop New York culture to the point where we don't even, we call it New Yorican. Hmm? Tiafimo Lopez emulates the New Yorican culture, but yet he got something to say about against Puerto Ricans. Stop the stop stop me when I'm wrong. Is Tiafimo Lopez swag 100% African American and New Yorican? Hmm? See, because even though Honduras and shout out to them, they're not big on boxing. That's not their favorite sport. So there's not a whole lot of Honduras, uh, uh, boxing fans from Honduras. That's where he's from, right? Am I saying it right? He's Honduras. Excuse the accent. Hold on a second. Yeah, he's from Honduras. Right? The people mad. Now, the Puerto Ricans in New York said, you know what, my brother? You Latino, and you know how Latinos do, man. You know, they're they going to band together. When the time is needed, when they got to make a, 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 a when they got to a, a put on a persona in front of the public, they're going to band together. Latino over everybody. That's, that's how they feel. So usually you're not going to see them go against each other, even though they do have a, a, a certain situation going on in the, the, the Dominican and Puerto Rican demographic. You don't usually see it play out in public. Because they understand with the united front how important that is right not like us not like black people but the reason why i bring that up is because the puerto ricans put tiafimo lopez on their back they the ones who show up the madison square garden in mass to support tiafimo lopez 
He didn't have to say nothing about Puerto Ricans. He could have just kept it to the specific fighter. But see, this is how people let you know who they are. And when they let you know who they are, listen, believe them, trust what they trying to tell you. And Teofimo Lopez, he gets that whole ideology on race from his father, which is why it comes in and it leaks out. And his father's always trying to babysit the words that he say. He know what he taught his, his son. He know what he say behind closed doors to his son. So Teofimo Lopez, he's so prideful, right? He throw the Puerto Rican fan base away, which was career suicide if you ask me. Right. And then he makes all these excuses talking about what do you do to Subaru Matias? What do you do to Devin Haney? How they not on this level? How he want to fight the best? How many people after watching his performance think he can mess with Crawford? How many people think he get past three, four rounds against Terrence Buck Crawford? How many people think that? Not many. Because I was disgusted. I really thought, but I said, if it goes to decision, because I said, you know, Jermaine Ortiz, he get tired, but his conditioning held up. If it goes to decision, Jermaine Ortiz got it. Now, let me tell you what I saw. I saw Jermaine Ortiz fighting off the back foot. They call him the technician. But you guys are used to seeing Jermaine Ortiz play rock him and sock him. See, it ain't my job if I'm in a fight to make it comfortable for the other fighter. It ain't my job to comply. With the other fighters plan or fighting style. In MMA. You got fighters that go against each other. Some got wrestling backgrounds. Some got judicial backgrounds. Whatever it is. But when they get in the ring together. And they mix their disciplines. Whatever discipline comes out on top. That's just what it is. Nobody's like oh well you only won because he's not a wrestler. And you got him on the ground. That don't, that don't matter. You knew you was getting in there with a wrestler. You understand you should have prepared for that. Or not taken a fight. It's not Jermaine Ortiz's job to stand there against somebody who has elite level skills, possibly the bigger fighter. He didn't look that much bigger, right? But he's been in that weight class longer, acclimated. It's not Jermaine Ortiz's job to make his game plan look good. Jermaine Ortiz implement, implemented a game plan. And even when Tiafimo Lopez was trying to lure him in, backing up, I was saying to myself, and the funny thing is about that, right? Even when he tried to lure him in, I was saying, don't fall for it, Jermaine. He's trying to lure you into a counter. But even with saying that, whenever he would just back up and say, come on, come on, Jermaine Ortiz would stop to him. It was only near the end of the fight. The last couple rounds that Jermaine Ortiz didn't step to him when he did that because as tired as he was, right, he was way more fatigued than he was in the earlier round. He didn't want to make the mistake and he didn't have to because he damn near fought a perfect fight, perfect game plan. Keep Teofimo Lopez on the front foot and catch him with that check right hook as you circle out to your right. He was escaping Tiafimo. He was getting out Tiafimo. He was escaping to Tiafimo's left side the whole entire fight. Tiafimo Lopez was running in to the same punch the whole entire fight. And it don't matter if you act like the punch don't hurt. Just like they tried to do with Devin Haney and Lomachenko. Lomachenko was getting touched up. And Lomachenko, just because he got a poker face, they acting like he didn't get hurt. He wasn't feeling those punches. But after that, you know, afterwards, his face looking like a whole hamburger. Jermaine Ortiz, outside of a headbutt, had nothing wrong with him. T.O. didn't hurt him. T.O. did less than him. Did Jermaine Ortiz do a whole lot? No, but he didn't have to. All he had to do was implement his game plan, and Tiafimo Lopez, uh, Tiafimo Lopez complimented Jermaine Ortiz's game plan, whereas it wasn't the case vice versa. Now, as you see here on the thumbnail, I got Tio Fimo as a wanted man for conspiracy to defraud the public. Well, his I have a dream speech after that gift that he was given. Rosa Parks ain't got nothing to do with this. She ain't got nothing to do with it. Yes, she did say, I only believe in one race, the human race. But she didn't then, before that, diss black people or diss Puerto Ricans. You don't get to, you know, come out your face and make things racial and then back off of it and try to make it seem like everybody else is bringing race into it. No. Excuse me, guys. That's not how it works.
right? So Tiafimo Lopez got a gift. <clears throat> Jermaine Ortiz, who boxed a, a, a great fight, right? Now has another loss on his record. I can understand the the, TF, the 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 Lomachenko loss for Jermaine Ortiz because he did take his foot off the gas, right? But this time he kept it consistent, and it was up to Tiafimo Lopez to figure it out. The job is not rock'em sock'em. The job is for Tia, is for each fighter to trump the other one's game plan, and Tiafimo Lopez had no game plan. Jermaine Ortiz pulled a Tiafimo Lopez on Tiafimo Lopez. Y'all remember what Tiafimo Lopez did to Josh Taylor? Had him thinking he was coming in for an all-out war, but what he really was doing was boxing. He was going to come out and outbox him. Even Senya admitted it. They wanted uh, Josh Taylor to think that it was going to be a rock'em, sock'em, all-out war. And Tiafimo got in there and boxed his head off. That's what Jermaine Ortiz did. They used to see in Jermaine Ortiz take a lot of punches, come in, go rock'em, sock'em. He didn't comply. He said he switched it up. When my man came out in a southpaw stance, I said the technician is here. He, when he walked to the ring, he had this ear about him like he knew something we didn't know. And as the fight played out, I started to understand why. Tiafimo Lopez had no answers. Devin Haney footwork is too good for Tiafimo Lopez. Just a couple days ago, Tiafimo Lopez Sr. said that Devin Haney only beat Regis because Regis is a come forward fighter, even though Josh Taylor is the same way. So now this don't make sense to me. See, this is why tough glove boxing, this is why you guys love me so much. This is why you guys love why I debunk these narratives so much, right? So let me get this right. Let me make sure I'm understanding Tiafimo Lopez Sr. right, right? So let me get this right. So Devin Haney. He can only be effective against fighters that play into his game plan and walk forward, right? Tiafimo Lopez, uh, Lopez don't have that issue, right? Devin Haney is only successful against people with no feet, even though he did fight Lomachenko and win, right? Okay, so if that's the case, right? If your son... And then, and he's while he said Devin Haney, I don't want to get ahead of myself. While he said Devin Haney is only good against come forward, flat footed fighters, right? At the same time, he's saying that Jermaine Ortiz, who is fleet footed in this particular situation, is a runner. So, which one is it? Is Devin Haney only good against flat footed come forward fighters with no feet? Or is the people who have feet that face Tiafimo Lopez running? Which one is it? Because in this particular situation, two things can't be true at the same time. Tiafimo Lopez does everything good, but cannot cut off the ring. The kryptonite for Tiafimo Lopez, as exposed by Sandor Martin and now Jermaine Ortiz, is patience and good feet. Those are the two things that Tiafimo Lopez have a hard time dealing with. So, if you don't want to fight a fleet-footed fighter like Jermaine Ortiz, the technician, and you don't want to fight a come forward pressure fighter who is going to play rock'em sock'em with you, Subriel Matias. Then what do you want? What are you asking for? Hmm? In the contract, do they have to guarantee you win? Is there a limit to how many times they can hit you in the fight? Because you made no adjustment to deal with Jermaine Ortiz. And everybody's trying to put this on Jermaine Ortiz. He fought the perfect fight. He fought the fight he was supposed to fight. I'll give you an example. Sugar Ray Lennon, right? Robert Duran won. Sugar Ray Lennon was known for being fleet-footed, very fast, and powerful. Roberto Duran insulted the man so much during a press conference that Sugar Ray Lennon just wanted to come and beat the man at his own game. Sean Porter style, blow for blow, rock him, sock him. No diss to Sean Porter because Sean Porter do have a good feet, right? But I'm just saying, we know Sean Porter was that pressure fighter, right? The ADHD boxer, I call him. 
And that's not a bad thing. Duran, Sugar Ray Lennon. The first fight, Sugar Ray goes to all out war, rock him, sock him. Loses. Because he tried to fight Roberto Duran's fight. Roberto Duran was coming up in weight to beat the bigger guy. So, during the rematch, what did Sugar Ray Lennon do? Now, granted, granted, Roberto Duran was out of shape. That's not front. We know. We know. And a rematch happened like, what, six weeks or something like that later? Eight weeks? Something. He didn't have no time to really recover. Right. But that don't mean anything. Sugar Ray Lennon, he, he, he did a different game plan for the second Roberto Duran fight and just boxed and used his feet. Roberto Duran quit. Not from punishment out of frustration. I didn't see Jermaine Ortiz get frustrated one time. I saw Teofimo Lopez begging Jermaine Ortiz to please stand there and let me hit you. I told the people this was the greatest show on earth. I did all of this nonsense on, on my walkout just to show that I really am a clown. And now you want to when you you want to get a gift decision and sing. If you miss me on the front of the bus, I'll be riding in the back of the bus. Y'all remember that song, right? Remember that? Yeah, African Americans know what I'm talking about. Puerto Ricans know what I'm talking about too, right? You want to bring Rosa Parks into it. Rosa Parks ain't got nothing to do with you, T.O. Hmm? Bruce Lee had his whole, he's holding his head in shame right now. Bruce Lee would have cut that ring off. He would have been water. You wasn't water yesterday, my friend. You was oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You was oil. You told us what you was going to do to Jermaine Ortiz, right? How you the greatest fighter in the world. I believe you even said one time you was better than Muhammad Ali. Well, guess what, Tiafimo Lopez? You're the only one I know that can lose in victory. And everybody's bringing up Shakur Stevenson. And it is true. Why did Shakur Stevenson win fighting fleet-footed against a come forward fighter like Edward De Los Santos? And Tiafimo Lopez gets this win when Jermaine Ortiz fight. And his fight essentially almost looked the same. Politics and boxing. But see, here's the thing. Let's take a few. I'm not going to make this video because you know my 20. I try to keep it under 20 minutes, but that ain't going to happen. Let's take a look at this right quick, guys. Hold on. Let me turn this up for y'all. Look at that. Now, Jermaine Ortiz, I knew they was going to rob Tiafimo Lopez, right? That's not even the part that got me. Let's hear what this fool had to say. Look, humans. Now we humans. Now we humans, right? Here, let's go. Listen up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, you hear the crowd booing. He himself said, yeah, yeah, yeah. You hear the crowd booing. This is not Tiafimo Lopez haters. That is his event. His. The date that he secured. And the crowd is booing. I could boo all you want. Suck a dick, no homo. No, 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 hey! Did y'all hear that? This is what he told. Pride is the devil. I think it got a hold on me. Now, after he told, now, after he invited all of us boxing friend, uh, fans, right? For having a real reaction, he invited us to the Frank stand. He then goes on to talk about, he becomes a black revolutionary talking about Rosa Parks, right? Then <laughs> he becomes an Egyptologist talking about the pyramids. Then he becomes a prosperity preacher talking about God and religion. All after inviting you to the Frank stand. Make it make sense. That is sound like somebody who won or feels like they won a fair fight. Now, is it his fault that he won the fight? No. 
But he know what it is. He know. At least Shakur was like, I'm not happy with my performance. I could have did better. At least Shakur admitted that. But to get on here and gaslight and point the finger at everything but your performance. There was no way CompuBox had those numbers right. I was scoring the rounds as they happened. I was counting the punches. At no point did Teofimo Lopez outland Jermaine Ortiz except for in one round and maybe two he outlanded. I gave Teofimo Lopez four rounds and that was being generous to be honest. When they read that first scorecard, I thought Jermaine, or I draw, uh, Jermaine Ortiz won. I was like, okay, they got it. But nope. Listen, I know, relax, relax. Let me, let me, let me go back on this, okay? We cannot, for one second, yeah, I'll be with that sport. let me speak. We cannot, for one second, claim these people, these fighters that don't want to come and fight. You go to blood, sweat, and tears. The three code of conduct. So what are you saying? That don't come to fight? So you mean to tell me I have to be an opponent and I have to comply with you. I have to play Rock'em Sock'em. If Rock'em Sock'em is your advantage, and my job as your opponent is to take that advantage away, what did, what did Jermaine Ortiz do wrong? He controlled distance. He was alert. He was focused. He fought off the back foot. He was countering. Lauren Tiafimo Lopez in. Didn't submit to Tiafimo Lopez's game. Didn't fall for being lured in. Although Tiafimo Lopez was getting lured in. Jermaine Ortiz escaping out the same side the whole entire 12 rounds. No adjustments made for Tiafimo Lopez. And then the same fans that he want to make him a pay-per-view star, he invites them to the Frank stand. Sugar Ray Robinson Award. If you ain't ready for this life, get the out of my sport. I am a champion. I bleed for this. I sweat for this. And I cry for this every time. Jesus is real. Now, now we went from that to Jesus is real. And Jesus is real, right? But we went from that from the Frank stand to blood, sweat, and tears to Jesus, and the announcer is gonna try to save him. And, and all I can say, may God give it, God take it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Tao, this is not the first time that you're faced against a guy who doesn't want to engage. The same thing happened with Sandro Martin. Oh, you're gonna engage. How, how is it that you weren't able to cut off the ring? What could you have done better tonight to, to get him to engage? <laughs> I had to get two guys so they could jump him. <laughs> so in other words, he doesn't have the physical ability to simply learn how to cut off the ring. Now listen, when I say simply learn, cutting off the ring is no easy thing to learn. If you don't know how to cut off the ring and somebody's fleet footed, you're going to have a damn hard time. That's not what this is about. But we're not going to act like. We're not going to act like that's Jermaine Ortiz's fault. That Teofimo Lopez can't cut off the ring. We're not going to act like this man didn't just get a gift. Right? We all heard the dumb speech he made. Honestly, I got to fly to get these guys. That's crazy, man. Hey, listen. I tried my best to do what I can for the people. You know who you going to... You know who you don't have to fly to get? I know who will stand right in front of you. I know who will stand right in front of you. His name is Subriel Martinez. Subriu Matias, a.k.a. Brownie, the one I call the Puerto Rican stepper. The one you call one of the best 140-pound divisions. One the opponents call Subriu Nomas Tias. He'll stand right in front of you. He won't fleet foot. Hmm? Like Jermaine Ortiz, the technician. The technician technicized the shit out of Tiafimo Lopez last night. And yeah, I know I made up a new word for that. Tiafimo Lopez got technicized by the technician. You understand? We making up new words for the effery that we see going on in boxing. 
I even tried to box going backwards and they did not want to commit. So that means I even tried to lure him in and he didn't cooperate. When did he ever try to box going backwards? He would stop and go like this and go and walk to the ropes. How was that boxing going backwards? So you people, listen to me. I only believe in one race, the human race. The human race. From Rosa Parks, she says it best. The only race I believe in is the human race. And that's what everything matters today. Have y'all noticed, Senior is always there. Now, T.O. is a grown man. Senior is always... Sorry, guys. I'm going to take my time on this video. He's always there. If you notice, he's listening very intently. Let me zoom this in for you guys. Look how he always does that when T.O. was talking because he knows that there's some stuff that's going to come out of T.O. Fimo's mouth that might hurt the brand. That's why he's always there like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. He should be there if he know his son going to say some nut-ish. Let's go. I believe in all religion. I believe in God, the one and almighty. Not mad at you for that. Come together as a unit. So, see, see, this is the gaslighting part. You can't say, please let us come together as a unit, but you always bringing up race. You doing that. We not doing that. You doing that. We responding to you. You calling us cre uh, crazy for reacting. 600 BC, when they made the pyramids. When they look, 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 look. See? The, 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 the... <laughs> The, the the announcer tried to save him because he's going off now. When they made the pyramids, they said it. United we stand, divided we fall. All right. So then, stop talking so divisive. We're going to finish with that. I just wanted to show y'all a little bit of that nonsense, but I want to get into my man, uh, what's his name? I want to get into Jermaine Ortiz, how he felt about the situation. Go back to the drawing board and see what opportunities come. Salute Jermaine Ortiz. Justice for Jermaine. You see the thumbnail. Justice for Jermaine. Salute Jermaine Ortiz. You fought the perfect game plan. You did win. And I want you to understand that even in this defeat, Loma, I give him. You you took your foot off the gas on that one, in my opinion, bro. But this one right here, you did that. You did that. Even though you didn't have the results that you would have wanted. Do you still feel like in some way it was sort of a coming out for you because you were able to show everybody what you're capable of? No, because I already did that with the Lomachenko fight. I didn't have to do a repeat of showing the world what I'm capable of. I already showed them before. This was no. Thank you. See, this is why I, I really started to like Jermaine Ortiz. That was a great answer. Do you think that even though you were robbed, even though they took, they stole from your legacy, right? Do you think that this was your coming out party. He lost and they asked him questions like he won. And he said, no, I already proved that when I fought Loma. And he's right. He's right, guys. After he's the Jermaine Ortiz is one of the only boxers I know that can lose a fight and his stock will rise. Because they know what they're doing. And this is why boxing is in a state that it's in. Yeah, most definitely. I'll have my team, my attorney, and we'll, we'll look into that. Do you have any last message for the fans? Uh, just thank y'all. Thank you to all my fans, my friends, my family, everybody who came out. Alhamdulillah, praise be to God. I'm happy that I came out healthy. My opponent came out healthy. My team is healthy. Um, thank all y'all for being here and spreading the word and the news. And I'll see you guys soon. That's what you call being humble. Even after he got robbed, he still showed grace to his opponent. Now that's the people's champ right there. Let's hear what Keyshawn had to say. Because he gets on my nerves and he do a lot of this and like somebody's really scared of him. But behind closed doors, every time I cross paths with him, him and his father don't say nothing. But in front of all these cameras, he get balls. Understand what I'm saying? But I'm me 100%. Great. And that's a fact. And you know how we know? Because he said all of this stuff about Subaru Matias. And when he saw Subaru Matias, he didn't even approach the man. 
He didn't shake the man's hand, say, I would like to share the ring with you. He didn't say, hey, you know, I'm talking smack, but it's just boxing. You know how we do. We let's promote the fight. He ain't do none of that. He avoided Subaru Matias. Act like he didn't know who the man was. But the fact of the matter is, Tiafimo Lopez, since Jermaine Ortiz is so fleet-footed, since Devin Haney is not going to do nothing but run, there's a man who y'all say don't have no footwork. There's a man who y'all say is the softest one in the division. There's a man who's one-dimensional, who can only come forward, who takes too many punches, who will get knocked out in two rounds, and his name is the Puerto Rican stepper, a.k.a. Brownie. A.K.A. Subrio Matias. The one his opponents call Subrio Nomas Tias. So yeah, I had to come on here and cook Tiafimo Lopez for the nonsense. Leave Rosa Park out of it. You understand? Leave the pyramids out of it. Bruce Lee ain't got nothing to do with this. You failed to make adjustments. You failed to cut off the ring. You failed to provide your fans with the promise of the biggest show in boxing. And so, yeah, now you really look like the clown. I ain't gonna lie. That outfit you came out with was dope. I like that outfit. I was, I used to dress weird when I was younger. I might have wore some shit like that to the club. You know what I mean? But, hey, the fact remains, Jermaine Ortiz was robbed, in my opinion, right? Uh, to me, the fight wasn't close. It wasn't. And that's just my opinion. You know, I thought Jermaine Ortiz outboxed him. Was it the most exciting fight? No. But I like the sweet science. So I understand when I'm watching a chess match. See, I get the casuals are going to just say, oh, you know, he ran. He didn't play Rock'em Sock'em. Tiafimo Lopez tried to make the fight. You don't try to make a fight when you're in a fight, my guy. You understand? The last time I checked, there was four ropes keeping you within a certain vicinity of the fighter. Y'all get in the comment section. Y'all let me know what y'all feel about Tiafimo Lopez being a fan of Rosa Parks. There's only one race, right? Do he carry himself like he believes there's only one race? What do y'all think about him giving props to the Most High, right? Right after inviting all of the fans that came out to support him and spent money out of their pockets to the Frank stand. But with that said... Tough Glove Boxing. Y'all get in the comment section. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you knew. I really wasn't going to make this video today, but I had to come on here and do something for you guys. Tough Glove Boxing. We out. You ain't got to go home, but you got to get the hell up out of here.